Okay, friends, I think it is time to finally continue on with TGCF. I have to get the volume out. This is going to be very unprofessional, but I guess who's going to be reading volume 5? That's right, me! Look at her! <laughs> She's so pretty! I really like this cover. It's so, so sunny. Let's get on with this vlog. Also, too, it's going to be spoiler feel, so proceed with caution. I'm not doing a proper intro. I just figured I'd kind of do it today when I'm doing this vlog, which I think I met today is August the 21st and it's 7.55 p.m. All right, hi friends. We're gonna continue reading TGCF. I feel like this one's way more on the thicker side as well too. I went ahead and already marked the photos. I love how like there's artwork, artwork, and then just freaking nothing and then artwork towards like the very end of this freaking volume i'm so nervous but yes i'm so excited to read this volume because of where it left off of freaking ling wen all oh, that betrayal and then beef leaf where's our bestie where's our messy windmaster i'm gonna start crying <laughs> crying crying encounter one already and it's from the last volume like that gutted me so badly. Now I see why people are like, beef leave. <laughs> I'm just so worried for like, what's gonna happen? Oh no, Hitmaster. I hope. I'm so nervous. <laughs> but I know this is supposed to be like very more, less heartaching because volume six, it's where it's gonna go all down. I still can't believe I already cried and we're not, we haven't even read the book. We're just crying about last book. I guess now that book is gonna be like the owie book like it is for me with the poppy war series anytime it's mentioned because oh man but anyways let's get to this vlog shall we i'm so excited to read back into tgcf oh my god this freaking chapter name y'all see this i cannot shillian what is happening here also too with the whole like ghost king and like who uh kind of i'm guessing losing his powers a bit as well kind of concerning let's keep reading though I'm not going to read too much tonight. I'm definitely going to be taking this vlog and volume way shorter. I'm not going to be taking this volume with me to work either. Absolutely, so bear with me, y'all, please. <laughs> I'm sure you'll still like this vlog, but just bear with me. I'm going to be taking it very, very slow. Okay, friends, I've been annotating, and I'm stopping at page 22 tonight. I am getting very tired. It's literally 9 on the dot. About to be 9 on 1. And... <laughs> Oh my god, I don't even know where to start so far of what's been happening. I have so much annotations of like shilling and like messing with Hua Chen punching his pinching his cheeks because he's so cute. And like I would honestly do the same, Shillian. And then he's like Shillian mentions when he's squishing him again. Then Salong, are you going to keep changing? He asked gently. Are you going to turn into a child of five or six? Or even better, a little baby. And I was like, imagine baby Hua. That'd be so cute. And then basically, Hua gets kind of like disappointed because, you know, he wants to be strong. He's there for protect his gaga. And, and so I'm like, oh no, poor Hua. He just wants to protect him, you know? But at least he can kick people's shins because he's small. He can like, you know, knock some kneecaps. And later on, there's this quote right here that Shillian tells Hua. He's like, you always been the strongest, but you don't need to be strong every waking moment of every day. And I was like stop like bro it's okay to be vulnerable sometimes you know shillian you have a way with words sometimes i tell you and then we learn about a little bit about Ishuan, which is blackwater aka was Earthmaster. yeah from the last volume that freaking killed water master which is Windmaster's brother that that's still crazy to me to be honest but um and then later on we read as well that like <laughs> kirong was basically trying to like imitate um hua which now makes sense of like the bloody corpses from like the hanging trees in the forest. Kirong would do that. And oh my god, I cannot with him. <laughs> I like how too who was like, so he just crudely strung up Rosa dead bodies. And then Shilian was saying like in his head, he had all the appearance, but none of the class. <gasps> that him roasting his cousin is so freaking hilarious. And then later on, they're like walking, you know, through the mortal realm because they can't go through, you know, Ghost City or the heavens because, you know, everything that's been happening. And then Shillian and who are talking, who is like, I don't understand something else. What Shillian replies, it's regarding that foul cultivator, Heaven's Eyes. I've toyed with him a couple times. His skills aren't bad, Hua Chen said. 
Yes, that's true, Shillian agreed. He's got talent and puts in the effort. Right, so why would he say that Gaga's lips are covered in ghost key? <laughs> Chin question. Da da da. Shillian's hands clenched, but he quickly loosened his grip when he remembered he was holding hands with Hua Chen. Hua Chen pressed him on the subject, his voice grim. Gaga, don't blow me off with words you used to placate those idiots. Tell me what I did to you that night. I'm like, we don't talk about what happens in Vegas, Hua. <laughs> you know, we're talking about Vegas. It's like a city, you know. So we, we say, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, Hua. Mm. <laughs> and then Shillian's like, it's not what you did to me. It's more like what I did to you, Shillian thought. <laughs> and then right now his eyes lit up because he sees a shop. And so he's going to give Hua Chen new clothes because obviously those clothes that he was wearing aren't going to fit him. And lo and behold, you know who appears? You know who freaking appears? Heaven's Eye. <laughs> and that's where I'm stopping at right now. Um, Yeah, at least we got some information and some stuff that's been happening and as well too. Oh, poor Hua. He just he wants to protect his gaga. <laughs> It happens, it happens, it happens, you know. But now, I will see you all tomorrow. Hopefully, I can read tomorrow. We'll see. I've been busy IRL with work. And then, too, one of my family members has a job, so I have to go and take them as well. So I've been not having the greatest time reading lately. So I feel like the end of this month in August is really going to hit. So we'll see how far we get with this TGCF vlog. Like I said in the beginning of this vlog, Bear with me, friends. We're going to get through it eventually. But yeah, so far, um, a little bit funny, a little bit wholesome in the beginning. I'm kind of nervous of what's going to go down, though, because, you know, it's MXTX. It's a dame. A lot of stuff is going to happen. Hi, I'm home. Let's update right now. I'm on page 42, but Kirong is back. I'm kind of confused on where um, Guzi is at the end right now that's happening. <laughs> it would be Kirong. I kind of figured whenever about the human being and then as well to guess who's also back <laughs> lan chang from volume three yes when we well technically she was also in volume two yes two and three guess who bessie appeared fu yao aka mu queen <laughs> mu, mu Xing. a lot is gonna happen i feel like also too where the freak is ling went i need to get to that area aspect of this because i got questions i got so many questions i'm afraid of what's gonna go down but yeah, anyways, I'm continue reading. That's where I'm at right now. But yeah, sorry I didn't read yesterday or like update the vlog. But I will update you all in a bit or later tonight or like a reaction to see what's gonna happen. I'm so nervous. <laughs> so that's where Goozy is? Kirong freaking locked him up. Oh my god, I cannot with this dude. <laughs> the ex's baggage is locked up in the firewood shed right there. Just take a look and you'll see. Kirong! <laughs> I cannot with this menace. What the freak? And chaos is happening in the hotel. It's, it's crazy right now. And oh man, this is so so wild for an introduction of the book. And I'm only 43 pages in, not even 50 or freaking 100 pages in. Thanks MXTX for the chaos you cause. <laughs> no way this is happening. No way. <laughs> okay, I'm on page 66. But a rundown. Feng Shin come came down and like, you know, is trying to figure out what happened with Shilian and um. Chaos went down, of course, and Feng Shin is like, Jin Lan? He's the dad, isn't he? And then we keep reading a little bit, and obviously, <laughs> she's like, you mother ever, and this scene here, and then, next page. <laughs> Feng Shin had moved to strike with his left when Jin Lan cried out, don't hit him. Feng Shin's hand abruptly stopped in midair, and a terrifying thought was born. It wasn't just him. Everyone present realized that it was. Feng Shin allowed the fetus spirit to gnaw at his arm like a man eating fish as he looked at Jin Lan. Is this? Stop. You could not be for real. Y'all see the time? Your girls want to go to bed? Stopping at page 72 tonight. I'll see you tomorrow. Hopefully. Hopefully. Hi, we're going to talk about bestie Feng Shin. Right, Feng Shin? Bro, he was his most devoted, like, freaking bodyguard ever. Like, <laughs> the besties of real bestie. I cannot handle that. I was like, damn. He was really trying to cheer up Shillian too during his um first downfall. Oh wait, correction, of his first banishment. So we learned a little bit about the backstory of that and too. Damn, can no wonder why he doesn't have some like, you know, he looks basic. Like, you know, he doesn't have like accessories and like all the you know, gold and stuff and like fancy looking like all the other gods. So it makes sense. 
how Shillian looks like that and how people call him Scrap. Scrap. God. Oh man, this hurts me. And then two, there's this quote on page 75. And I want to read it out loud to y'all because I was like, okay, y'all two, stop this right now. This is what Shillian says. Sometimes it's not up to you to decide if the road is easy to walk. And then Hua Chen is like, I might not be able to decide if the road is easy, but whether I walk it is entirely up to me. Oh man, that hurt. I was like, damn, I was not ready for this. <laughs> but yeah, oh man, this is getting so good so far, learning more about the backstory. I'm glad it's very kind of like compared to last time. I want to know too where the freak Ling Wen is. Um, hello, <laughs> please, soon. I want to, I got... I got questions I need answers, please. So, yeah, I'm continuing reading now. I'll see you all in a bit for another update. Update. I'm going to bed. Literally, after I updated y'all where, where I was, I went to go do some things, and then I literally... <laughs> I probably slept, like, three hours today. Um, your girl's tired. <laughs> but I'm stopping at page 80 today. Not much read from N2, updated much from where I left off. But right now, it looks like... The king of Junwu, right? The upper court man right now. Sky King. He's sus, so I'm kind of nervous about what's going to happen with that. But yeah, I'm going to go to bed and get some more sleep before I go to work tomorrow. I realize so August is almost over, which means September is next month. Which means October, November, December. Three more months. And I told myself I would finish TGCF at least before the end of this year. I'm only on book five, there's eight. <laughs> So technically I have three more books, but y'all, I'm just such a slow reader right now with- Okay, update. So, General kind of wants Shillian to return to the upper court and take his duties for the time being while he goes to Mount Tonglu. And Shillian's like, no, basically. So, instead, he does what John Woo is going to do, which is going to be um, <laughs> slaughter them, basically, is what I'm getting. So, Shillian and Hua Chen are going, right? And then we're learning about what a puppet master is. And that's that freaking thing that creeped me out from volume three. That thing is, I don't like puppet masters. <laughs> I don't like them now. Like, what do you mean that's what it is? That's literally what that freaking thing was. So, <laughs> also, as well, I do not trust Jun Woo in the slightest bit. Like, he's very suspicious to me of like wanting to make Shillian be in the upper court and take his position, which can probably take longer than like a decade. Like, how do you have this much trust in Shillian when everyone else doesn't like him? But you do. Very sus to me. And then too, like, while you're out doing that, if you did do the mountain slaughtering, like, wouldn't you be able to finish it sooner? Because, like, you know, you're way more powerful. But, like, then again, Shillian's, like, a, um, was a general. So, like, it makes sense. But I don't know. He's just very sus to me. And too, I don't like the freaking puppet master thing that they mentioned. Ew, icks me out. No, thank you. Stopping at page 106 tonight. Your girl's tired. Look at my freaking annotation so far. It's not a lot, but hey, <laughs> it's something. And then two, I'm like that far into it. Just a little tiny dent, not much. But hopefully, eventually, I will read more. At least I read a, a bit today. I'm just so tired and it's only what? It's only 8.50 p.m., but I'm just tired, so. Yeah, I'm gonna take you with me to work tomorrow, too. Hopefully, I can read some, because I did not read any of it in the car, or, like, at work today, because I was so tired. I just slept during my three breaks, so <laughs> we'll see if I can get some more done tomorrow. I just realized as I was updating my story graph, I meant 106, not 86. The Delulu is Deluluing. I'm going to go to bed. <laughs>
Okay, I'm about to head off to bed, but Pei Ming is there and what's this guy's? We learn a little bit about his past and his sword and Hua Chen is kind of having a weird moment. But I am going to be stopping at page 136 because I was on the live stream watching Kicker play Dating the Grim Reaper, so that was fun. But yeah, 136 is where I'm stopping tonight. This is how far. I don't think it's going to focus, but that's how far I am this little bit. <laughs> My annotations so far. I did read it, this a book, this book at work, thankfully. Alrighty, friends. So I'm like a few pages in. Sorry, I haven't updated the vlog that much. Um, right now, what was their name? From Peishu and Banyu. Yes, the one from book one. <laughs> right now, they're all together with um, Pei Ming and Hua and Shilian right now at the mountains. And we're learning a bit more about um, Pei Ming's past right now. Which is, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not a fan of Pei Ming. But at least we're getting some info about him because I'm sure now with um, the Watermaster, right? Yeah, out of the picture right now. Kind of crazy. And two, I, he's a man whore. <laughs> he's so, oh, pay me. But yeah, um, I'm on page 150. I'm, I'm getting far. I'm going to read as much as I can today. Don't know where I'm going to stop. We're going to hope we get through a lot of it because I really wanted to feel like finish this for this month but i don't think that's going to be possible since it's like it's the freaking 29th bestie i don't think we can do it but yeah i'll update you all in a bit of where i am later today so far i'm enjoying the story as always <laughs> definitely chaotic definitely chaotic and two i like how emming was being praised and then two kind of grew up from like the baby sword of hua being chibi right now little kid it's kind of cute little touch to that and emming just being praised is so funny to me it's just so silly like i call emming like a pet because it reminds me so much of a pet <laughs> i don't know why i'm sure it's not a pet obviously because it's a sword and it's got a freaking eye which probably is hua chen's eye um but yeah i'm gonna continue reading update you all in a bit i'm realizing now why we don't like pay me <laughs> page 156 Banyu is literally not raised like other girls, obviously. We know that from like volume 1 and then 2 right now. She wasn't like a delicate girl raised in a normal household and she hadn't a clue of how Pei Ming judged beauty. <sighs> I cannot with Pei Ming. <laughs> I don't like his character, no wonder. I um, wonder if maybe he'll like Watermaster. I hope he kind of does. <laughs> Them two are horrible. Like, how the heck can people find Pei Ming attractive is beyond me. Because, like, you have such a crappy personality. I'm guessing that package down there is probably what's doing it for you. And the only thing people would, or females would want to get near you. Because your personality sucks, Pei Ming. Freaking sucks. Despise you. Anyways, <laughs> I'm going to continue reading now. But, oh, man. Now I, won now I remembered why we don't like him. <laughs> As if, like, I don't remember the other stuff. I mean, I did start TGCF Volume 1, like, back in, like, February. And now we're here. <laughs> Almost towards the end of the year. And I ha I'm not even halfway done with... Well, I am halfway done with the series, I would say. But... Oh, yeah. Pei Ming and Shilian both face off before. Hmm. I guess that makes sense. Although, Shilian, you should have... <coughs> him. <laughs> just saying. Just saying, Bessie. Oh! <gasps> Pei Ming just asked a really good question right now. I gotta annotate this because... Mm, I got questions, too. He's like, you've been banished twice and bear two cursed shackles on your person. I forgot about that. Um, you could have asked the emperor to remove them after you sent it the third time. So why didn't you? You know what? Why didn't he? That is a good question. Now I want to know. What? Why is Shilian replying with a question after Pei Ming asked him a question? This isn't how this works, Shilian. I need answers, please. I've been wondering the same thing, too. Like, I don't want to, like, guess why he would keep the shackles. Okay, so we never got the answer. Sorry, I was distracted. But as well too, Shilian had asked him, um... After you snap, Ming Guang, why didn't you forge a new spiritual sword? And then Pei, Pei Ming raised his brows. What an unpre unpleasant question. Shelly and Magic's expression, likewise. And then they share a chuckle and stuff. So we didn't get our answers, but oh well. Future things. I was literally about to go to sleep because I was watching a little bit of Kicker and Stitch's live stream. But I'm very tired. I don't know if you can tell from my voice, but like, I was legit about to pass out. And I was like, wait, gotta update the vlog before I go to bed. But I'm stopping at page 171. I'm halfway done with this page. Um, this is so far, like, the dent we have. And then this is all we have left to read. I did annotate more, too. Oh, she's getting, like, very pretty. <laughs> but, yeah, um, I think right now we're about to learn about, uh, Rainmaster. 
right? Yeah, Rain Master. So, yeah, I'll probably read that tomorrow, though. I'm gonna go to bed. <laughs> I'm tired. I'll see you all, hopefully, another day. I'm not even gonna say tomorrow, because knowing me, may I accidentally not read, but who knows? Whoa, 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 so you're telling me Jung Wu is literally the oldest god? No wonder why they all, like, chose him to be, like, you know, the best. Because literally, <laughs> a few centuries later, because, um, they're talking about this other Wuyang, the kingdom of Wuyang, and the ascension of that person. But anyways, um, talking about Jung Wu, he's freaking old he like basically heralded a brand new heavenly era no wonder why we probably should not trust him he created all of this he's literally in the know of everything he's the oldest one there is and created all of this like he's the mastermind i don't trust this bitch i don't trust him and literally he filled in the gap for worshipers basically too and gradually the stable upper court of the current day was formed i'm telling y'all sus and then too which um he is freaking 1,500 years old. He's old. <laughs> He's hella old. I, I was not ready to learn about that information. Like, damn, bro. John Woo, you, uh, you old. <laughs> you old. I'm on page 178. Paiming, you are disgusting, bro. Get him out of here. I really hope he... Because, nah. You... <laughs> He goes, ew, his hands. Keep your hands to yourself. Keep your hands to yourself. That's disgusting. You are literally hating on Banyu. And you're over here putting your arm around her. I'm hoping that poison from her snake freaking gets you killed. Okay? I don't like you. And then now, too, on the other page. <laughs> I'm so passionate about that. I'm so sorry. Shilian wants to investigate, of uh, find out information about the position itself. Like, who created the role? What kind of power is supporting all this? And then, too, even discovering... We, or like them discovering how to like destroy it one sweep and rid the world of the disaster for good we never had to worry about another ghost king being born so they're gonna be doing that because Hu Chen was like oh yeah last time I came here I couldn't investigate because I was too busy murdering people <laughs> you go bestie you go husband <laughs> I applaud you for that it makes sense so now they're gonna be investigating Bungo Stray Dogs no I'm joking <laughs> this is a whole different fandom <laughs> okay I'm gonna go to sleep your girl's getting tired, but I'm stopping at page 196. Learning the backstory with Ling Wen, or right now, they're a, a man. <laughs> so, them, them, as a mortal, and then two, this other character, um, the freak was his name? Jing Wen. Jing Wen and Ling Wen sound so similar. It's just so hard for me to, like, differentiate the two. So, I don't know. Like, I don't see a photo of this other dude. So, I'm like, I'm so confused, but anyways, I'm gonna go to bed. Okay, I don't know where I last updated you all, but, um, hi, I didn't read yesterday. I went to San Japan yesterday. It was fun. Found a lot of Dame stuff. I'm so happy. So, so happy. But anyways, can we just talk about the brocade immortal, um, the coat thing that Ling Wen's wearing that made her turn into her male form right now, being jealous of Ling Wen? Like, that is a, that is a person. They have their own, you know feelings and stuff you brocade immortal um literally getting jealous over pay me why would you get jealous over pay me he's disgusting and who now um hua came into the picture because shilian found the two and right now the brocade immortal is trying to like you know using li wen right now like with her male form you know trying to hurt shilian and li and pay me and so hua comes out of nowhere because they're like you know trapped but look at hua Oh my god. Man, I just wanted to film on my bed laying down, but no, my camera's like, no. Anyways, um, like I was saying, uh, Shillian's like, oh my god, who up? And he's fangirling, basically. And they can smell like flowers. And so two bloods are happening. I was like, it's Hua, isn't it? And lo and behold, it is Hua Chen. And he's like, salam. And then to this part right here. He turned around and saw that Ling Wen had fallen soundlessly to the ground. A tall, slender young man stood there, chuckling softly. With hair raven black and robes of crimson red, he could be none other than Hua Chen. Blossoms fell like blood. Blood danced like petals on the wind. His face was as spirited and handsome as the first time they met, and his eye was bright and lively. He languidly sheathed that long, slender, silver scimitar and spoke with a deep voice. Your Highness, I'm back. <laughs> like, look at that. Imagine seeing him coming down like that. Like, bro, I would be like, so long too. And then now, um, Shilian was debating whether or not he should, like, um, approach Hua. 
and like you know he was gonna brush off some of the flowers around his side but he thought it'd be too intimate Shillian, just do it, please. Spare us something that we can't do, <laughs> please. Shillian's like fangirling over like, not only can you call forth blood rain, you can also make a flower shower. I didn't know that. How fun! And then who was like smiling, walking towards him? He's like, this was something spontaneous, a trick I only came up with today. Originally, it was just going to be the usual blood rain, but then it occurred to me that JJ or Gaga was present, and wouldn't. Gaga blame me if I drench him. So I held back at the last moment and transformed it into flowers. I'm glad you found it fun. So romantic. He didn't want his Gaga to be like, you know, covered in blood. So he wanted to make it a little special for him. So I'm glad they liked it. And then now Payming's like, excuse me, you two. <laughs> Let me down, won't you? Payming, you're a freaking mood killer. Read the room, please. But yeah, anyways, I'm gonna continue reading. But yeah, the Brocade Mortal is literally a, a horrible kind of like an ex to Ling Wen right now. I'm glad Hua Chan kind of knocked Ling Wen out for a bit right now that's happening. Yeah, Hua Chan's like, they're fine. <laughs> he only put them like temporarily to sleep, so to calm down that. So I hope Ling Wen can come back into her female form and be a boss queen again because Ling Wen, oh my god, poor Ling Wen. We learn about her backstory a bit to how, you know, she was mortal and everything and then how she ascended and was treated. It's crazy, like, because, mm. you know, a lot of people aren't like heavenly officials, but like, she was different from all the other women, obviously, because, you know, she she's very intelligent and she'd done a lot of work for them. She held, hey, she created the um, communication array. <sighs> Poor Ling Wen. Anyways, I'll update you all in a bit. Okay, so they're, like, at this other temple, right? And so it's, like, falling apart or whatever, so um, Hua Chen's waiting for the shovel to appear. I'm over here thinking, ooh, earth, earth master, rest in peace, right? And then Shillian's thinking, you know, when he sees the black cloak, I figure that it's black water, but it's not. It's actually a person, and Shillian was so concerned. Like, he was about to beat this person up. But no, it's just a normal person. I'm like, he cares so much for his bestie. I just want to know where he is, too. Like, where's Windmaster? Please tell us. I got, like, heart aching. Surprisingly, I'm not crying, but, like, where's our bestie? I miss, I miss them. But, yeah, a little update. I was freaking out. I was like, um, is the shovel doing this on its own? And then I'm like, oh, Earthmaster? And then I'm like, black water? When bestie, mm, feelings emotional roller coaster right now, <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna continue reading now. It's getting real good. So, and two, I'm on reading sprints right now with Chloe still because we're re buddy reading it. Obviously, um, I'll probably link down Chloe's video below. See, sprinting with Chloe, <laughs> we are going through it right now. Of course, I'm ahead of her once again, as always, because she is a sloth and a slug. Her words against herself. Love you, bestie. <laughs> But yeah, continuing reading this baby. I know I haven't been reading too much. I'm so glad I have a three-day weekend, but I've just been busy, so I haven't read too much. But hey, I'm getting reading done today with Chloe, at least to keep ourselves accountable with this baby. So yeah, it is a thick one too. And two, I feel like we're kind of delaying it a bit because volume six, y'all. Volume freaking six. I'm not ready to cry. I thought Beak Leaf volume was bad. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get through it though, I already know, but ah, I'm not ready. <laughs> Just learned about the red string of fate, or the red string with Hua and Shillian. <laughs> Apparently though, it's like some sort of spell, and Hua says that um, even though we won't separate voluntarily, this is a precaution. The red string won't break and won't grow shorter. As long as this red string remains unbroken, it means the person on the other end is alright. It will surely lead us to each other unless one of us is no more. What do you mean by no more Shillian asked? Dead or dissipated, which I didn't explain. <laughs> so, yeah, we learned a little bit of that now. And there is a picture or like artwork of the red string of fate of them too, which is really freaking cute. It's so cute. I freaking love the artwork in this Don May. So, yeah, but right now they're in a cave, that's why. And they're all separated slash disappeared, so... That's why Hua and Shillian were having a little cutesy moment. And now it looks like they found Pei, Pei Ming. Since someone's throwing fists apparently. So pretty sure it's him. Or if not, it's um, Ling Wen. Also, I fell asleep last night with Chloe when we were sprinting and I left. Um, but I stopped at page um, 253, which is this chapter. So I like finished the whole chapter. And then too, I need to go back and cut my tabs. But yeah, Chloe had fell asleep too. I think she stopped... 230 something I think she said so I think she's very close behind me but yeah I'm gonna read it again today and this is 
how far I am. We're like already at the 50% mark. My tabs so far, <laughs> there are a lot. I'm gonna take it with me to work and then to today at the uh, event with Zaylee. So I'm gonna be reading this baby while we wait. Hopefully, we'll see. I'm over here peacefully eating. Also, update, we're learning the backstory of um, Kwan Yi Zin, um, the curly haired one, my favorite, and to um, Yin Yu's past. They're past together. And basically, Kwan Yi Zin was basically, you know, I feel like he has autism. He's on the spectrum. And so he didn't want to do a lot of work, you know, he was the last one to be like a part of Yin Yu's, you know, thing. And then he ascended, both of them ascended, and obviously Kwan Yi Zin is more more powerful because he killed a wolf something, a Yao wolf or something like that, instead of Yin Yu. And so now Yin Yu, you know, was always so nice to him, you know, because Kwan Yi Zin was always being bullied and then like, you know, taken for granted. And I feel so bad for his character, like he definitely is on the spectrum because oh but that poor kid and then too like you knew finally snapped right now because apparently he gave the brocade immortal to Kwan Yizin for a birthday present because he had nothing to give and he told his, one of his followers to go get him a gift and they all hate Kwan Yizin obviously besides you knew and he felt bad for like you know being shying away after like you know a few I think since last year so he got him a present it's brocade immortal and he finds it later on and his fellow follower was like oh yeah something you know you caught and you can control him now because he's a piece of crap and so he was like you know hating on Kwan Yi's and Yin Yu was just like you know going to go take it off of him so he goes to um the heavenly court and they're having a meeting and obviously Yin Yu can't go in you know chaos happens and so obviously he controls him and he's telling him to stop and stuff and like to take off the armor and then to stop fighting and stuff because you know he's being controlled and then this remark right here on page 292 as i am eating you know finally snaps even more and is losing his mind and he tells kwan yizin to just go go unalive yourself basically will you and then oh god literally the description right now of this mxtx what the freak like oh god he slipped oh man <laughs> oh god i was like what okay junwoo thanks for coming in oh no Kwan Yizun. oh no junwoo's about to go off on yin yu right now <gasps> obviously Tu ling wen is there and so she's when you created the broken immortal we learned and so I guess she probably told Junwoo and something's about to go down. So Ling Wen's also watching this. I'm hoping Ling Wen's gonna like, you know, come in and like explain. She didn't speak a word. So he's just Ling Ling Wen, you're gonna let Yin Yu take the blame. Okay, I'll tell y'all in a minute. So let me just keep reading because I'm just so into it right now. Like, I'm so sorry, Chloe. Like I even messaged, you know, our little chat and I was like <laughs> I'm kind of almost done with the book because there's like 410 pages exactly to be correct. I'm on page 294 and I'm not stopping like I'm into it. I'll probably stop at around like 300 something pages today I feel like because I'm just into it into it. So just in case I forget to update I'm stopping here tonight. Um, So far I'm kind of laughing at um the freaking commentary of like <laughs> Kwan Yisun getting yeeted by the shovel from me and you like this scene right here <laughs> you found that or this scene where um yin yu's asking him you want to come out and then kwan yi's nodded i do very well look here yin yu reply in a blink of an eye with blinding speed he whacked the shovel against kwan yi's head clonk kwan yi's instantly fell silent <laughs> i cannot i ship though i love them and then two there's a scene right here Shillian didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Well, yes. Do you want to live in here? If it's with Gaga, I don't see why not. Hui Chen said. All right, fine. I was joking. Because Shillian's like, let's get out of here. It's so cute. And then here's another scene right where I stop. Forcing them to press tightly against one another. Their faces nuzzling and their ears warming at the contact. While it was hardly the right time, a thought nonetheless flashed through Shillian's mind. It doesn't feel so bad to share a great and it puts smirks. <laughs> I bet. I bet, Shillian. I bet. Alright, friends. Big update because I'm on page 330. There's a bunch I have not talked about. Um, let's see. Page 306 where um, Yin Yu and Kwan Yizin are like, you know, st stuck in the cave or whatever. Um, 
Hwan Yi Zin is like literally inside the cave or like the mountain. <laughs> and so um this part is funny. I freaking love Quan Yi Zin because underneath the mask was Yin Yu's pale, terrified, obviously shocked face. Quan Yi Zin was fiercely thrilled and bounced in place with his head covered in blood. And I put, I love this kid. <laughs> I cannot say this word. Xing Xiang. Yin Yu's lips twisted. He looked like he had seen an indescribable horror. He abruptly clutched his head. You got the wrong person. With the roar, he bolted. As he ran, he blasted at the person behind the ham. His pursuit. Don't follow me, don't follow me. Quan Yi Zin dashed after him, completely ignoring the blast. He only yelled overjoyed, Xing Shan is me. <laughs> I cannot with him. I swear. Um, and then later on, um, we find out to um, Hua stop Quan Yi Zin because, you know, they went through whatever and put him like as a weird doll thing. So Quan Yi Zin would le leave Yin Yu alone to do his job. And apparently um, the mountain spirit, um, it's running. It can move and it's going to the kiln because you know to i guess murder shillian and the group because of the per or precipitator that was talking through an array i'm guessing with someone connecting so yeah this is interesting and then two um they can't find ling one so ling one's escaped again i don't know where she is with the broken mortal so i'm guessing another book <laughs> who knows and apparently now uh shillian and Hua have like a little moment too they get the red string of fate so yeah it's so cute i'm so glad with that the red streak of fate later on pei ming is like oh want that being away so hu chen literally makes it disappear and shillian thinks like oh it's gone like he's disappointed but he tries not to show it i'm like baby boy is not gone is there trust me and then hua addresses it in a bit and it's so cute and they're gonna have a moment but then pei ming freaking cock blocked and he <laughs> like always forget pei ming pei ming you're annoying <laughs> We're learning about this place that's like a volcanic ash place, which is um, the kingdom of Uyong. There's this po quote here where it's like, all that once lived would eventually pass away, leaving behind only that which had never lived at all. It's like moving. And then we learn about um, the people of Uyong worship the crown prince. So this should be his protection charm. So it's like this cool charm, which is like the ominous star. They use this ominous star to like symbolize the... Um, you know the prince and apparently these words mean saint born under the ominous star in recent times the star are going befundlement res resting in the heart constellation is a grave omen but things might have been different two thousand years ago and then chilean mulled over those words his heart slowly sinking for he was also born under that same very celestial face the sign of the ominous star wasn't this too much of a coincidence? I think so. But yeah, now they're gonna go in the Holy Temple. And that's where I'm at right now. A lot has updated. Um, on page 330, little Pei is also like ill, of course, because you know, he's human, he's mortal now. So that's why they went to this place to seek out food and water. So yeah, anyways, I'm gonna get back to reading. Hopefully I can finish it today because Chloe already finished it. <laughs> I figured I'd let Chloe finish before me since I'm such a speed reader. I don't know if I'm gonna finish it today, we'll see. I'm hoping to finish it today though. I really am. So. <laughs> I am laughing right now, but oh, um, a little update so we can get to the part of where I'm laughing at. Um, apparently, Kirong, Guzi, and Lady from Book One, what was her name actually? Oh, the Ghost Bride, Huan Xi, I believe is her name. And so, yeah, they came to the mountain as well. <laughs> and right now, this part, Guzi, <laughs> Guzi's with Kirong in the, in the bride, right? And then uh, Shilian and Hua are trying to attract him so they can, you know, do a plan thing. Ki Rong notices that um, Guzi is running away and he's like, hey, don't run around randomly. You hear me? He yelled from inside, run off around here and the big rats will eat ya. Get back here. The silver butterfly flew off at once and hid. Guzi's eyes winded. Uh, I'm going to be, he answered. Ki Rong clicked his tongue. Kids are so full of shit and piss. <laughs> and then he stopped caring. Guzi scampered to the sun and whispered again, scrap gaga, scrap gaga. <laughs> What the fuck? I cannot with this right now. And then two of the rats are freaking weird. I don't know if I talked about the rats. But I don't like these rats. Kenzie, can see what what is this rat thing that is happening? I forgot to mention that. They look like big cats, apparently. I literally put um page 340. Sure enough, they weren't human. They were rats. And I put Ken's question mark. And then Hua Chen grabbed him. I mentioned there are a lot of rats here. Let's go. Even as he rushed along, Shilian was still stunned. Are those rats? Why do they look like more like cats to me and I put bitch what the fuck and then 
Apparently, too, they were speaking in human voices, creating a sense that was as creepy to the extreme. And I put, yeah, I don't, I didn't sign up for this. And then I'm like, oh, what the heck, you? And I'm like, oh gosh. And then MXCX, how do you come up with this shit? Because literally describing the rats and how they like eat in the rancid smell and the, the oh, it's disgusting. I don't want to talk about it in detail because that's really disgusting. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah, um, it's weird. And I guess two Chilean can speak another language. I see you, my scrap queen. <laughs> but, yeah. And then, too, before I see if anything else. Oh, there is another quote was like, without fear, there is no courage. And I'm like, said, well said. Oh, and then, too, there's another funny moment, too. I forgot about this. I like how I'm, like, sporadically talking and, like, it's not making sense and it's randomly in my vlogs. But if you read it, you know what the heck I'm talking about. Apparently, too, um, <laughs> before Shuanji entered, she said Guzi down. Guzi scurried in with a ta ta ta, -ta and rushed straight to Ki Rong's side. But when he saw him, he pointed an accusing finger and shouted, Dad is secretly eating bad things again. And he's like, I'm not Ki Rong retaliated. And I put him howling because... He's a dad now. I'm loving this. A little character moment. You know, art that's... Character development. Who? I don't know. Uh, Guzi's like, I smell your breast stings and when you eat bad stuff, Guzi accused. Kiwon raised his hand and huffed a couple breaths against his palm. An expression showed that he could smell the blood reeking from his own mouth. Without any way to deny it, he grew annoyed. God damn it, <laughs> Shuanji. Why did you bring him back so suddenly? Didn't I say to walk him around a bit longer while I eat? Xuanji walked in, visibly peeped. He was making a fuss about a tummy ache after he drank water, so I brought him back early, she explained. My lord, please don't make me take care of children anymore. I don't know how to deal with him. <laughs> what the f Honestly, she's real for that. She's real for that. And then to Kirong trying to give Ghost Bride pay me. Because, <laughs> you know, she hates him. I completely forgot about that, like, that beginning arc like oh whoa time has gone by fast but yeah anyways that's a little update i'm having a blast oh my god they're gonna sacrifice pay me now <laughs> to uh, shuanji <laughs> to get her away so they can rescue the um rain masters people villagers that ki rong has stolen and so they can deal with ki rong himself so this is funny this is gonna go interesting i wonder if pay me is gonna get hurt is he gonna leave is he like <laughs> Don't like him. Anyways, I'm going to continue reading now. Oh my god, the butterflies are literally a clutch. They can spy, they can stay on you, and then too, they can record and you can use the voices? The wrath butterflies know what they're doing. Who like you picked a good in your thing, <laughs> if that makes sense. Anyways, I still can't believe that the thing to unlock his powers for Kirong to unlock the Rain Master's people is dog actually. <laughs> what the f I cannot with this man. I cannot. Queen Yushi, aka Rainmaster, finally joined the party just as Pei Ming is literally getting his life gone from <laughs> the Ghost Bride. Oh man, this is funny. Our Rainmaster, the 16 princesses of the kingdom of Yushi, Yushi Huang. She was also the last ruler of the kingdom of Yushi. Wow. Oh, she was once a princess, huh? Rainmaster ran into this person in white. And then they're describing it. And obviously, Shilian thought it was Lan Ying. Grainmaster is saying that, no, the young man was about 16 or 17, and his body type was similar to that of your highness. And they're wearing white, and they have bandages on their face. On their face, wearing white, and is similar to Shilian's body? Is this from the... <laughs> I'm scared. No. Is this the freaking white no face, dude? With the mask? The creepy motherfucker? That I don't like. I don't like it. I'm scared. Is it? I don't like that thing. It gives me heebie-jeebies like, mm, I'm scared. Is it? Is it really? And then two now. Hi, editing stuff. Um, I don't think I mentioned this at all when I'm looking back through my vlog. I have a theory. Because remember how in the beginning of uh, Mount Tonglu for, you know, them fighting whatever? But there's a mention of Puppet Master, right? And his white face is Shillian looking right. And General wanted to go over there, right? And to I know Chloe mentioned about like I believe like no face is Jomu because they're not I've never seen them in the same room. I believe it. And I agree with her. What if the Puppet Master thing he controls this thing? So it's basically Jomu spying on them. 
Because he's so obsessed with Shillian, right? Right? Like, I feel like maybe that's what it is. Like, I was thinking about this before in the beginning. And whenever they mentioned the puppet thing, I was like, oh. But I never mentioned it in this vlog. And I'm mentioning it here. So I don't forget if I ever come back and rewatch my videos. <laughs> and two, obviously, for theory-wise. So, yeah. This was my theory. This is my theory. Don't know if it's right. We'll find out in the future besties. <laughs> I'm on page 392. And apparently, we're learning now the backstory of Rainmaster. So, apparently, she slit her throat. <laughs> and apparently now, I'm like learning everything of like the temple and the kingdom and everything so yeah let me read a little bit more into it because i just want to talk about that most important thing because like don't tell me don't tell me don't tell me that it's it's freaking freaking no face of course pay me and raymaster have a little past encounter and how she killed she like you know her neck no wonder why he didn't want to take raymaster's sword because that's the sword she used to slit her throat Oh, that's crazy. That is really freaking crazy. But now I'm on page 401. We ended on a cliffhanger. Are you freaking for real? Are you for real? Hello, friends. It's time for the outro. Sorry, I actually didn't update the vlog because my mom walked in and it was already 10 p.m. She's like, why are you up? Reading things, mother. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, mom, if you do find my channel eventually. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so I don't even know what I was talking about. I think... Rainmaster was trying to lead away the rats so Hua and Shilian can go to this um, place. And so Pei Ming as well was like, oh, I'm not going to let her be alone, you know, being like a man, you know, like, oh, I'm going to go save her and rescue her. She needs a man. No, she don't. She's fine. She's on, She's okay on her own, Pei Ming. F off. She's got it. She's good, Bessie. And two, they had like a past before and you kind of witnessed her dying. <laughs> that was interesting. But yeah, anyways... <laughs> And then at the very end, there's these murals or whatever, and Shillian is triggered by it because of his, you know, trauma of Chanel. Or, sh sh is it Chanel? Sh Chanel? Shillian's freaking kingdom back then. He had seen, like, one of them was like, it's the same. He mumbled, it's exactly the same. The people of Wuyang had also encountered the human face disease. Why were the experiences of the crown prince of Wuyang, someone from over two millennia ago, so eerily similar to Shillian's own? And I'm like... It has to be him from a past, maybe, but um, Hu Chen saw how quickly things were going downhill and studied him. Your Highness, stop looking at it for now. But the impact of that image was too great, and the trauma left in Shi Lian's heart by human face disease was too severe. He stared at it like someone possessed. So then Hu comforts him, you know, and he's like, All right, Your Highness, listen to me, listen to me. And then he paused and continued in a low voice. You see, the previous murals have told their story chronologically. There is cause and effect. The last one had the crown prince of Wuyang building a bridge to the skies. So the next one should dip sit in an event that came after. But this mural doesn't connect to the last one at all. The timeline doesn't make sense. Isn't that right? And then Shillian came back to himself quickly and began to think. Sherlock. <laughs> You're right. There must be something missing in between. Someone destroyed the previous two murals before we got here. And that person destroyed the other two murals. Why didn't they destroy this one too? Hua Chen asked. Why did they leave it? And then there's possibilities, you know. They might have thought that leaving this mural behind was inconsensual. That it didn't matter if it remained. They weren't concerned with us seeing it. And the second possibility, Hua Chen asked. The person actually did destroy all three murals <laughs> and this one was painted on afterward meaning that it's fake shillian said slowly very right hua chen replied why not think bigger maybe all the murals we've seen along the way were lies we're already very close to the answer so before we get there don't start overthinking things on your own all right and then <laughs> literally at the very end there's this third possibility and i'm about to read this little thing at the very freaking end the bottom half of shillian's face was still pressed to his shoulder and hua chen's voice was right next to him it was extremely, extremely quiet, and no one could hear except Shilian himself. His breath hitched slightly as he heard Hua Chen whisper. The third possibility is that the person wanted to destroy all the murals, but they couldn't finish in time. We came in just as they were about to deal with the last one, which means they're hiding in here in the ground hall right now. And it ends right freaking there. I'm scared something's gonna happen, because the book six I heard... Oh no, I'm scared. Ah, 
Surprisingly, I did not cry at all or like teared up. I'm like scared right now because I'm like I'm thinking of beefly right now. But anyways, I'm scared for book six because of how that ended. I'm scared to see who the third person is. Like, is Whiteface gonna come back? Because it mentioned like you know Shillian's worst fear, and I'm like this is plotting for the next book. From what I hear, it's supposed to be worse than Beefly's book, which is volume four. I'm scared. Oh no! And then if Windmaster appears in book six too, oh I'm gonna cry because like I'm concerned. I don't know what's gonna happen um but yeah basically volume five was just like a whirlwind it was a trip so fun to read tgcf in my opinion such a whirlwind it's hard to remember everything because there's just so many characters and so hard for me to keep up of what they look like of who's who and the names and then that's just the transformations that they do and their other names it's like <laughs> my head can't handle it but it's fun too, you know, in a way. It's never boring, I feel like. Never is. Um, even though some books made me feel icky. And some of the stuff made me feel icky. But, you know, I it's still a fun ride. And I really care for these characters, you know. I really feel for Shillian. And then Windmaster. No! Ugh. And then Kwan Yee's and like, oh man, those are my faves. Those three are my faves. And obviously Tu Hu Chen. Ooh. Love that man. Anyways, I can't wait to, you know, read the next volume eventually. I don't know when I'm going to, but eventually I will with Chloe, of course. Um, so I buddy read mainly this whole book with Chloe. Obviously, she finished before me because I let her get ahead of me because I was way too ahead of her. And as well, too, I never mentioned it, but I'm giving this book five stars. Like, <laughs> oh man, this was just funny and goofy and Kwan Yizin and then Nin Yu, a new character. And then learning more about some of the other characters' past, you know? And we get a new character and then something bad's gonna happen. Like, bro, this thing and on a cliffhanger. Like, TGCF is not lighthearted. It's fun. There's a bunch of stuff happening. Like, oh man, I cannot wait to reread this series eventually one day and like just binge it. Because like, I need to do that. I felt like I forget some things from volume one. Because at first, I didn't realize that the ghost um, bride was the one from volume one. I had to like, think about it. I was like, oh, that's the bit from volume one. <laughs> So it's kind of crazy how there's so many characters and they all have paths, you know, of gods, you know, and such. And their downfalls and everything and intertwine with each other. It's crazy. But yeah, that's it for this reading vlog. It's probably a long one. But yeah, that's it for this one. Five stars. As well, too, my anno final annotations for this book. Hopefully it's in focus because, oh man, I annotated a lot of this baby. <laughs> I had so much fun. Like, look at that so many annotations but yeah i hope you all have a good day good night morning whatever time it is for you when this video reaches you and until next time i will see you very soon i have a bunch of videos coming your way anyways bye